Hi everyone, Raquel here from Scrap Cozy. In today's video, I'll show you 10 different patterns you can create with just one stencil, PS222, which I've designed for Paper Artsy in my latest January 2021 release. If you want to see what other stencils and stamps are part of this release, check out the video in the screen right now. I had lots of fun creating this accordion or concertina, and it would be very helpful for me in future projects, since it will serve me as a collection of sample patterns for this stencil. Maybe I should call it accordion of background swatches? I really don't know how to call it, but I hope you know what I mean. It should be somewhere where I can go and remember what this stencil can do, basically. If you have a better name or an idea on how to call this project instead, let me know in the comments below. I would love to know. Okay, let's get started. But before getting into the patterns, I needed some covers for my accordion. So I went and upcycled a piece of cardboard that I cut in two. So I painted these two pieces with paper RC fresco paints. I went first with chalk paint, I think it is. So a white acrylic paint. And then I covered both sides. So I took my time because I wasn't sure if I wanted to show some of the pattern of the cardboard, which would have been nice but I finally decided to kind of cover most of it. And then once my first layer is there, I'm going to mud splat, which is a brown, and then I'm going to apply it with a technique that is called monoprinting. So basically you put your paint into a piece of paper and then you touch the paper into your surface. So you transfer the paint like that. And at first I'm being very light I don't want to transfer absolutely everything there and then once I'm running out of paint then I'm pressing harder and harder and I'll do the same in both sides I'm moving to the third color which is buff this is like a cream well beige color and I'm going to apply in the same way just painting some of it onto my paper which should be dry by now and I'm lightly touching it so again it's just playing around with however you want to see it and if you feel that a space is a bit dark from before then you add this on top and since these are opaque, you're going to cover whatever was before there. Paper Artsy paints have different uh, type of paints. Some of them are opaque and some of them are semi-opaque. Some of them are translucent. These ones are opaque. Now I'm changing to gold and I'm just adding a tiny bit there, which is too tiny. <laughs> I'll add a bit more later on and I'm applying it in the same way. So just like the touches here and there, just for a glimpse of gold and I'm doing that in both sides and in the two pieces. Basically at this point I don't know which one is going to be my um, cover because I'm just giving the chance to the four pieces to actually be the main one, right? So I'm, I'll just select the one that I like the best at the very end for the main cover and then the other ones, well two of them will be hidden and the other one will be on the back. And now I'm adding some ink on the edges. I'm just trying to add a more distressed look and a more edged look and I like to define my edges because then well uh, your eye kind of pops into the middle of the piece later on so I finished with the distress oxide and now I'm going to apply the regular distress as well which is well a bit more it has more power <laughs> basically and yeah it adds a bit more darkness to it and I like it and also uh, because everything is a bit wet right now with the paint I mean with the ink, I'm going to add some of my new embossing powders with wool. Um, so this is the Ancient Jewels Trio and I'm going to select here the uh, turquoise one which is called Egyptian Turquoise. And I'm just going to use my heat tool to emboss the powder. And I'm adding a little bit more ink just so my powders stick to something and I'm adding it very scarcely and very randomly here and there because I just want a little glimpse I don't want it to overpower the full thing so once I'm happy with whatever it is I'm just going to melt again the powder and make it embossed 
and these are my two bases for the cover so I'm going to just put back in the jar all the powder that it's left and you can see that the two colors the gold and the turquoise I love it so I'm going to add a little bit more of ink I always like to add ink on every single step I think and the final thing is going to be add the sentiment so I'm adding thank you why not so this is Actually, I said that I would use the stencil in 10 ways. Well, this is the 11th way, actually. Uh, you just use it with crunch paste. And it's a very nice title. So I'm just putting thank you, because why not? <laughs> so I'm just heat setting it with a heat tool. And this is actually, I was using a crunch paste. I love that texture paste. So now I'm making some holes for the button. And I'm passing through some twine. And this is a very thick twine, so it took me a bit effort <laughs> to actually pass it through. So I'm passing both sides and then I will put the button through it. And the idea is that it will hang from both sides and it will seem that well that the button is soon soon sewn sound <laughs> uh, to the page basically. So you, you'll see the results when I pull the cords and then you can see how it stays. So I'm just making sure that it stays and that will be the mechanism to close the accordion. Okay, and now I'm placing the different um, laces, well, the, the lace and the ribbon to see how they look like. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm going to use Multimedia Matte by Ranger. This is my go-to glue for things that I want to make sure that they stick super well. Because once they, it dries, it will dry matte, which I love and it will just seem that it disappears and it's super super strong so I'm just going to add that there and then I'll add a little bit on the back too and it takes a little while to dry but not a lot so that's great and it makes everything very strong at the same time so I'll use this glue also for later on you'll see to attach the accordion to the covers so that's one part done and once I'm happy with the position then I'm going to attach that um, little ribbon it's velvet I think yeah and then I'm just putting a little bit on behind and then there I'm taking my time and I'm making sure that it's perfectly okay and I let it dry so that's one done and now I'm moving to the accordion so the idea here is that I will use um, the stencil in 10 different ways because there are like 10 different slots that will be viewable once the accordion is mounted and I'm just using distress oxide inks through the stencil with a sponge and I'm just basically um, painting through in circular motion so you need to be kind of light and don't load it a lot because you don't want the ink to kind of um, go behind um, the stencil. So that's the basic uh, pattern. And now I'll just put in that tape over there to make sure that I don't, um, well, um, make dirt <laughs> or that, that, that I don't go to the other sides and I keep my pattern to each slot. So this is the basic pattern and now I'm going to twist the stencil upside down and I'm going to create my first pattern. So I'm basically uh, making sure that they fit like in the middle exactly. And you have these upside down and well, a normal position pattern. Which is pretty cool. I like it. Now I'm peeling this off and I'm moving to the next slot. So I'm again covering the two pieces that are on the side. So I make sure that I only work on the surface that I need. And again, I'm going to put the first layer, which is the normal triangles up. And then I'll put them upside down and then I'm matching them. So then they look like a star. So basically I'm touching the different uh, points of the triangles. So the up touch the ones on down and basically just create star. 
so that's another pattern you can create and I'm using the same color of the ink but of course I mean you could change colors you could even change um, texture and instead of doing um, inks you could do texture based so again that's my first layer I turn it upside down and then if you basically shift it a little bit then you also have diagonal lines that you can do and again you could um, change the color and maybe using I don't know uh, a red one in comparison with that one or or a deeper blue would look nice too so this will be basically the swatches for me to use in a later project and I'm cleaning the stencil because it was overloaded so now I'm just again uh, this time I'm just uh, sitting in the same position and just shifting it towards right and up so then I create again diagonals but all triangles are facing on the same direction you could do that too and then I'm doing the final part as before I start with the original position and then I'm shifting it just sideways so then you create lines but this time horizontal so basically depending on how you um, offset the stencil you will get one pattern or another and these are just 10 patterns but you could create many more so we are have created now six and we will be going to the back where I'll be using different inks and it will be a bit more playful you'll see so that's the first side of the accordion and then I'm not working on the first and last uh, edge because those will be stick to the covers so first I'm adding the normal layer now I'm switching to a deeper color of blue I was using speckle leg by the way and now I'm using faded jeans and I just shifted them on the same position a bit up I think yeah so I created those lines now I'm switching to um, green which is peeled paint and I'm shifting that to another position as you can see there and now I am creating like a triangle of triangles kind of and now in the middle I will put a fourth triangle in a deeper blue I mean in a deeper green this time is four s'mores and then well you can see that the four different colors can tell you roughly how I move the stencil around and there are still more white spaces so effectively you twist it upside down the stencil you could fill all the gaps if you wanted with different colors of inks but I stopped there just at four <laughs> and now I'm going to create one now I'm switching to four s'mores for the rest of the cases and this one is pretty interesting I think because this stencil can turn also into a Christmas stencil and you can create a Christmas tree just by shifting it up twice after the first layer so this is the second layer of the tree and I'm going to show you how it looks so far with just two layers yeah and now we are going to add a third layer just on top and the same separation basically so yeah you will be able to create a Christmas tree <laughs> and now you have the patience you could always decorate these trees <laughs> if you wanted but all these patterns basically you can use them to create cards or different mini projects that you want and this can be your background doesn't need to be your main star of the card but just a nice background and now with the same color I'm going to apply the first base and you can create also a very nice thing and you can create mountains if you want so basically you create the first layer and then you shift it like mm, touching the other one overlapping a little bit on the side and you could stop there there will be two mountains but I decided to add a third one and actually this can be also pyramids 
if you want to if you go to Egypt or something and you're creating a layout about your holidays there for example or you just want to do like an Egyptian thing well it could this could be uh, pyramids as well so I'm just adding a third layer also overlapping the two triangles and it looks like that but you could do other positions if you liked and now I'm going to the final one and the final one is like a variation I mean same sort of movement as I did for the Christmas tree but in this case well it will not be a Christmas tree of course um, the triangles are separated by a distance and I'm just shifting it three times and you can see that you get a completely different result it has nothing to do with the other one and the movement it was just well similar but yeah so shifting it up and then you just get a full cover of triangles so those are all the patterns and I'm going to assemble the accordion since my covers are vintage look I'm going to age also the inside of the accordion in the same way that I did the covers a little bit so with some distress oxide vintage photo I'm just adding some um, ink towards the edges with a sponge dauber just to make it a bit more vintage I mean you could leave it as it is if you like clean and simple of course but I always like that vintage touch and it will match my covers basically so I'm just adding in all the uh, edges including in the folds so in all those creases as well the valleys and the mounted <laughs> of that accordion and I'll also uh, tint the edges so when I see the accordion from outside I don't see whites and I see everything kind of um, brown which I prefer and the way that I created the accordion was cutting an A4 size and then I folded in four I think and then I basically overlapped uh, two edges so they're like kind of stick more or less in the middle So I'm just completing the same, the other side in the same way, adding ink on all those spaces. And once I'm happy with all the ink, I'll just uh, fold it and then make sure that I have all the ink where I want and then I'll stick it to my course. Again, I'm just testing that there now how it will look like and I'll show you how the accordion closes so basically once they are stick together you will have um, the covers like that then the bottom will be there and then I'll put the twine towards the back and then I basically um, cross those two parts and then I come back to the center and then the idea is that what well, you pass each um, part of the twine through the um, button like that and that holds together and will not open so now I'm going to stick this using the matte medium and I'm putting it on the paper everywhere and because it has, um, well, I'm going to stick it to a surface that it's not completely flat because it has the, all that fabric over there. Then I'll need to basically uh, make sure that those bars are very secure. So I'm just lifting it a little bit and putting a bit more and adding some pressure to make sure that it sticks. And then I realized that that part was a bit, well, dry when I pressed because this really dries very fast. So you need to kind of act fast. But just you add a bit more and add a bit of pressure, be patient and it will stick perfectly. And I'm repeating the same on the other side. And because these two are flat and I put a lot of glue, then just with a little bit of pressure, I didn't need to put more. And that's it, that's done. I hope you like this mini project. I think this format is great to store all those pattern samples and come back to them in the future. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe and click the ring bell button so you don't miss any future videos and give me a thumbs up if you liked it please also if you want to learn more consider registering to my next and my past online classes 
I teach them live at a pri private Facebook groups, but once the event happens, they are available to watch on replay, so you can take the class at your own pace. I'll add the links to them and some sample videos in case you're interested and you want to join me. Okay, nothing else from me. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video or in the next class. Bye!